So today's video is about the internet. And more specifically, where does your internet come from? So if you're like most people, your phone connects to your router in your house. This is a fiber router that we have. And then this fiber router goes out, down, out the house over that fiber cable and connects to that pole over there. Now, this pole over here looks different depending on what kind of connection you've got. If you've got a fiber connection, you might have it over the air like this. You might have it trenched under the grass in your front yard. Or you may even have an old ADSL connection where it's connected to the telephone lines. But if you've got a last mile fiber cable like us, like we do, fiber cable goes into your house and it's connected through a sequence of relays down to the fiber cable along your road. So this here is the relay that connects uh, the fiber cable that goes along the road here to the fiber cable that you saw up in my house. And this fiber cable goes all the way along the road along another sequence of relays which connects to a fiber duct. And so this here is a fiber duct where your neighborhood's internet connection, local connection, is connected to an internet service provider like Neotel or Metro Fiber or Dark Fiber Africa and it's connected to one of those companies' internet backbones. There's another one over there. Um, to go further though, let's go back inside to a Mitch that's not out of breath and that can further explore where your internet goes from here. Ah, okay, I'm back inside. That was a really good run. And now the question is, where does that internet go from that fiber duct? Because side note here, it doesn't matter whether you're using mobile data or you're using a fiber connection like mine or you're using an ADSL line, no matter what your last mile kind of connection to the internet is, your data ultimately ends up going to a central server somewhere and ending up on one of those big fiber lines uh, that one of the internet service providers in South Africa owns. And so looking at the overall coverage of fiber connections in the country, um, this is Telcom's fiber connections, I think. You can see it looks quite extensive, but I'm not sure that this is a backbone cable throughout the entire country, and so more reliable kind of sources like Neotel. So this is uh, quite an old article I saw on mybroadband.com, but this is a map of all of the fiber cables that Neotel has installed throughout the country. Um, and so you can see that they connect the big metropolitan areas like Johannesburg and Bloemfontein and Kimberley and Cape Town, Port Elizabeth, East London, Durban, Durban, Marisburg and whatever. But this is not fine enough control for me. Like I want to see exactly where my fiber cables are, exactly where my internet is running through, where the request that I make for google.com on my phone goes to. Um, so this is also just another potential map of all the fiber cables. This is Sanran's cables would also simplify. And I went onto Dark Fiber Africa's website and I could see quite an extensive uh, map of exactly where the fiber cable goes. So this is my prediction. I don't think the exact fiber cable location is really published because I don't want like the important uh, vulnerabilities of their system exposed to the entire world. But from the looks of their coverage map, most of the traffic, at least for Dark Fiber Africa's network, goes from Joburg to Pretoria. Then from Pretoria, goes across through Bronkorspreit to Middleburg, where it goes down along the N11 to Ermelo, carrying on down the N2 all the way down to Mkondo, and then it splits off here onto the, what is this, the R33, it goes through Freyheit, uh, and then all the way down through KwaZulu Natal, it goes along that road, and then it ends up near Richards Bay, and then the termination points for South Africa's fiber, po uh, fiber cables can be seen on this submarine undersea submarine cable map. Um, which is really cool and shows exactly where all the fiber cable termination points are in South Africa, where they meet the undersea cables. So this is a great uh, website, you can see exactly where the different fiber cables are throughout the world actually. Um, but focusing in on South Africa, there is a backbone here down in, I don't know even what this is, um, in Port Elizabeth, but it just connects to the other two hubs. And the main two hubs uh, in South Africa are Cape Town and here just above Richards Bay, it's a place called Mtunzini. Um, it's a tiny little place. I went and looked over here on Google Maps. It's this tiny little place in the middle of nowhere um, that's, It has a really small population. It doesn't look like much goes on here except for the fact that they have a fiber termination point here which connects to the 2 Africa undersea cable, the Eastern Africa submarine system cable, the SAFE cable and the SECOM cable. Uh, which in turn then connect the rest of South Africa up to Eastern Africa and onwards towards the Middle East or even on towards Reunion Island east of Madagascar and on towards India, Sri Lanka and those countries. And then the only other fiber termination points are down in Cape Town, Melkbostrand and Jezefontein all around the Cape Peninsula and that is where South Africa connects to Western Africa and then up across the South Atlantic and the North Atlantic Ocean 
up to the Americas and to the rest of Europe. And so, so interesting that my internet and anyone else in South Africa's uh, data requests probably go through one of the major metropolitan areas down to the coast if you're down in the Cape it's either down to Jezefontein or Melkbosart or if you live anywhere on the eastern coast it's down to Mutenzini and then it goes on towards the cable there and on towards the rest of the world. But Mitch you say there's got to be a more scientific way of looking where your internet routes through to get to its destination uh, through which fiber cables which country you surely just guessing is not the best option the way you've drawn out in Google Maps like this and so here you go for the engineers and you um, I did the trace route uh, function on the command prompt, uh, so I'm sure there's something similar on Mac, but trace route shows each individual point, each individual hop or server that your data has to go through to get to its final destination. It's not the most reliable because it sometimes only lists uh, certain IP addresses and certain servers. It doesn't show every single one it's been through because um, else it would be a never ending list. Um, but basically, I ran the trace route for google.com and what it gave me was this list of IP addresses here which when I went and googled goes through a collection of ones in South Africa first like the Metrofiber network because my ISP is Metrofiber it bounces around AfriHost and that a bit and then it magically skips to Quebec, Montreal Montreal, Quebec in Canada and then after that down to um, Mountain View, California, which is where Google servers are, and then it comes back um, to South Africa through Midrand and Johannesburg. I'm not quite sure about this one, and it's also made very difficult by the fact that big companies like Google and Amazon and Microsoft have data centers all over the world now where they cache certain websites and that, so you're not always going to go all the way to Cupentino uh, via the undersea cables to fetch a Google page. Sometimes you're just going to go to Google's data center down in Cape Town or you know, up in the Middle East or in London, you know, wherever their data centers are scattered around the world. And depending on how the specific website that you're going to is optimized their um, storage and their hosting, it's going to be different. So then I thought, okay, what's a website that's less likely to be cached like that on an international server? And so I went and I pinged the USA.gov website, the website of the American government, and I got a very interesting result. So I got some request timeouts here, but basically all of these IP addresses, and let me move over to here, um, these IP addresses went a very strange route. So they went through South Africa and through Johannesburg and that as expected, but then they went to Mauritius um, first, which is very confusing. So if we go to the submarine uh, undersea cable map, the only cable from South Africa that goes through Mauritius is this um, SAFE cable or the SECOM cable. And you can see here uh, in the trace route it says uh, jnb.za.ccomnet.com and Cape Town za.ccomnet. So obviously it went from Joburg down to Cape Town, and then along the Seacom uh, cable, and then what? Went through Mauritius? Okay, that's very weird. Then the next one that it went to was, uh, again, Mauritius, and then it ended up in London, uh, which is very confusing, and you can see here from the, uh, the trace route list as well, it ends up here at lhr.uk. LHR, is that London Heathrow? I'm really not sure. Anyway, it lands up um, in the UK, and then uh, this, these IP addresses here weren't so clear, but then it basically bounces around Europe for like a while through a couple of different servers and a couple of, I don't know what Telia is, it, it must be an internet service provider uh, in Europe. And then it eventually makes its way over to Oregon in the States. I think Oregon is a big place for data centers in the States. And then it finally ends up in Seattle, Washington, uh, which where it looks like <laughs> the USA.gov website is hosted and then it bounces around a bit more in America and comes back to South Africa. Um, but very interesting and very weird and shows that it's not as simple as just tracing out a route on a map but the surrounding technology infrastructure, data centers, caching and the way big ISPs and big companies like Google and that handle network traffic makes a big difference to individual performance on computers and when you've got a million and three devices connecting per second to your website if they're all trying to connect to your one server in Cupertino it's of course not going to work so caching and uh, routing and using data centers and intelligent technology that we've developed uh, to solve this problem is very interesting and it's, it just shows how complicated the internet really is and how grateful we should be for it. I know that it might sound silly to you and that to like to be excited about this or to be like focused on this or be actually even interested by this but it was really cool to me to see actually how you know the you know, amazing interconnected network of phones, devices, repeaters, fiber cables and infrastructure that's been built over the last probably a hundred years really um, allows me to make a request on my phone here, sitting on my bed, um, 
to my router, which runs along a fiber cable, which runs along the neighborhood's fiber cable, which connects to a fiber duct, which connects to a fiber backbone, which connects to an internet service provider's fiber uh, national grid, which connects down to the coast, which connects to an internet sea cable, which goes across the ocean and to another country's fiber backbone network, and then all the way down in reverse, down the same uh, network, all the way till it reaches Google's servers somewhere in Cupertino. And then the whole process repeats itself as it sends data back to my phone, or less than a second. Um, and it's just, when you look at it like that, the scale of, and the scale and magnitude of the technology that we've built never fails to impress me. And it makes me grateful for the fact that I'm living in the 21st century and that I can enjoy all the privileges of technology and the internet and all these awesome things. And yeah, it just makes me really happy to think about. And I want to share that uh, discovery and just what I've been thinking about with regards to the, the technology infrastructure today. So thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.